Welcome back to another tutorial and thanks for tuning in. This tutorial shows how to solve this problem shown with finite element analysis. The first step to solving finite element problems is to decide what type of element to use to solve this problem. Well, the answer to that question is in the title or whatever the last element type that you covered in class was. Here, we note that this structure has loads in both the x and y directions and also has moments applied to it at different nodes. Also, we are asked to solve for the displacements in both x and y directions as well as angle of deflection. We cannot use the beam element here because it only accounts for forces in the y direction and angle of deflection. The frame element accounts for displacements in the x and y direction as well as angles of deflection. The givens for this problem are the geometric figure shown, modulus of elasticity, moment of inertia, and area. The lengths and angles of each element can be deduced from the figure. The steps to solve this problem are to determine element type which was done previously. Each element has its own local stiffness matrix. The derivation of the local stiffness matrix is not shown in this video. I only show how to apply the equations and matrices in MATLAB. The derivation of the matrices is explained in class, so you will have to pay attention in class to learn that. The next step is to create the global stiffness from the local stiffness matrices. Then, the next step is to define the boundary conditions and unknown values. The final step is to solve the equations. Here is the local stiffness matrix for a frame element. Remember a frame element is like a beam element but it allows for loads and displacements in the x direction, so you will note that it is similar to a beam element but has an added x component for the load and displacement. The local stiffness matrix relates the force moment column vector, shown on the left hand side in the above equation, to the displacement column vector shown on the right hand side of the above equation. You will note that the terms in the force moment column vector correlate directly to the terms in the displacement vector. In other words, the force acting in the x direction on node 1 is denoted as F1x in the force moment column vector. The corresponding term in the displacement column vector is U1 or the displacement in the x direction of node 1 for the element. The same applies to the moment and angle of deflection or phi. The next step is to create the global stiffness matrix for the frame elements. Each of the three elements has its own local stiffness matrix which was shown previously. The global stiffness matrix is created by superimposing the local stiffness matrices onto the global stiffness matrix. The figure above shows exactly how to do that. For example, element 1 has nodes 1 and 2. Each node has a displacement in the x direction, displacement in the y direction, and an angle of deflection here defined as phi. Each of these displacements is defined by an entry or index in the global stiffness matrix. You will note that some nodes are shared by multiple elements. For example, node 2 is shared by elements 1 and 2. Therefore, we have to superimpose the last three rows and columns of local stiffness matrix for element 1 to the first three rows and columns of local stiffness matrix of element 2. The figure here helps us visualize this concept. For example, the local stiffness matrix for element 1 is used to define the first six rows and columns of the global stiffness matrix. These rows and columns are bounded by the green rectangle. The next six rows and columns starting from the third row and third column are defined by the second element. These rows and columns are bounded by the black rectangle in the figure. The global stiffness matrix is then used to develop the 12 equations shown here in matrix form. You will note that 12 equations can solve for exactly 12 unknowns. However, we see that there are 24 variables in these equations which are 12 displacement variables and 12 force and moment variables. This is where the boundary conditions come in. Boundary conditions are used to define 12 of these variables. For instance, we know that nodes 1 and 4 are fixed, therefore the displacements for x and y as well as angular displacements for these nodes is 0. This takes care of 6 values. The other six values are the given forces and moments for nodes 2 and 3. Now that you understand how to solve this problem conceptually, let's program it into MATLAB. The software program MATLAB is still not at a point where it can understand how to solve a problem after you explain it in human terms. Okay, start by creating a new M file. Clear the screen, clear all variables, set the format to long G. So we can see uh, multiple decimal places because we're going to be converting everything to base metric units. 
E is the modulus of elasticity, 200 times 10 to the 9th pascals. The area is the cross-sectional area given as 6,500 millimeters to millimeter squared, but we change it to meter squared, so we change it to uh, 10 to the negative 6. Moment of inertia is 80, to, and it's given in millimeters to the 4th, so we multiply it by 10 to the negative 12 to get it to meters to the 4th. Length is given as 3 meters, so no need to change that. And theta 1 is the theta of the first grid with respect to the x-axis, so it's set at 90 degrees. Here we just copy-pasted the local stiffness function, or local stiffness matrix, and created a function out of it. And this function, if you'll know, it takes inputs E, I, A, theta, and L. Now back to our M file. We're going to use these givens to create the first local stiffness matrix. Uh, basically, the local stiffness matrix of the first element. And the inputs are going to be uh, E, I, theta, and L. Sorry, yes, correct. And that is the local stiffness matrix for the first element between nodes 1 and 2. Now, next step is to create the global stiffness matrix and add the first local element or local stiffness matrix to it. Since it's made up of three elements, the size of the global stiffness matrix is going to be 12 by 12, and we'll just set all of the elements or the indices of that matrix to zero. Now, the first six rows and six columns of the global stiffness matrix is set equal to the local stiffness matrix of the first element. And since we set what set the first or the top right of it, anything above the diagonal, we need to use our symmetrify function, which we used previously in the beam in the beam um, beam element video, and that will make everything below the diagonal equal everything above the diagonal. And I'm commenting. Uh, Pretty rigorously, so if you look at the comments, you'll know exactly what I'm doing as well. And now the next step is to create the local stiffness matrix of the second element, which is horizontal. So uh, as it is horizontal, theta 2 equals 0. And we're given in the problem that the moment of inertia is not 80 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. Instead, it is 40 times 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. And converting that to from millimeters to the 4th to meters to the 4th, it becomes 80 time, 40 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, now the next step is to include the second or the local stiffness matrix from the second element into the global stiffness matrix. So we basically add it as before, but we need to add it in the right place. We don't just add it starting from the row one, column one index. We, we add it from the row four, column four index. And we have to also not forget to add what's existing in the global stiffness matrix that came from the first element. Don't forget that the first element has nodes 1 and 2, and the second element has nodes 2 and 3. So they share node 2. So there's going to be some overlap. Okay, that's what the global stiffness matrix looks like so far. And uh, every, every time we add to the global stiffness matrix, we need to run the symmetrify command 
or the symmetrify function, which, as I said before, makes everything below the diagonal equal everything above the diagonal of the global stiffness matrix. Now more copy and paste to get our third local stiffness matrix for the third element. This time the frame points downward so it's become negative 90 or it became negative 90 degrees and I3 is the same as I1 80 times 10 to the sixth millimeters to the fourth and con to the sixth sorry and then converting that to meters to the fourth we multiply it by times 10 to the negative 12th power that's just the conversion from millimeters to the fourth to meters to the fourth and it's much the same way we need to add now the third element or the local stiffness matrix of the third element to the global stiffness matrix and in this case we add it from the index that begins with the seventh row and seventh column all the way to the twelfth row and twelfth column. And that's just for comment commentary of what we're doing here in this step. And now as far as the global stiffness matrix is concerned, it has been completely built. Now we're getting an error here because I forgot to um, fix the coordinates or the indices. Now here's the global stiffness matrix and it's complete. So after making the global stiffness matrix, we do the rest of the right hand side. Okay, next step we're going to do is to, now that we have our global stiffness matrix completely defined, we're going to define the boundary conditions. Remember we said that we have 24 variables, uh, 12 displacements, and 12 forces and moments. So we're going to use the boundary conditions to eliminate 12 of those. So now we can solve for 12 unknowns in our 12 equations. So two boundary conditions that state that the frame is fixed at nodes 1 and 2 tell us that u1, v1, v1, and u4, v4, v4 all equal 0. And then we will define symbols for u2, v2, v2, and u3, v3, v3, and set them as real because they're going to be solved in our equations. And then the displacement column vector is now ready to be defined, which is just going to be the displacements for each nodes 1 through 4, u1, v1, v1, uh, up to u4, v4, v4. The right-hand side of the equation is nothing more than the global stiffness matrix times the displacement column vector. Now to go to define the known boundary conditions for forces and moments. Now the unknowns here are the opposites. They are going to occur at the nodes because those are the reactions and the knowns are given in the problem. So we'll start with the knowns. We know that uh, there's a force applied in the x direction at node 2 and this force is 40,000 newtons converted to, from kilonewtons to newtons. And the force in the y is zero as well as the moment at node two. And, and for node three, we're given that there's a 500 newton meter force in the uh, counterclockwise direction or what I wrote as the plus direction. And there's no forces at node three in the x or the y. So those are both zero. And then we define now sims symbols for the reactions and there's going to be six reactions uh, force f1 y f1 f1 x f1 y and m1 at node 1 
and f4x, f4y, and m4 at node 4. Now that we have defined what we're calling as the left-hand side of the equation, we can create our 12 equations using the... Oh, sorry. First, we need to do a force moment column vector. So we're going to put all of those in one column vector. The forces and moments acting at nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, now we're going to create the set of 12 equations, and we need a for loop for that. And it's just going to be the force moment column vector equal to the right hand side. Right hand side, we said, was the this the global stiffness matrix times the displacement vector. And it looks like I made a mistake here. Uh, yeah, while I figure it out, I appreciate if you do any, if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Uh, to resolve the error, I forgot that I needed to add an I index to the equation and force. And here I note that the last three are zero, force in the x and force in the y in the moment, and that's not correct. So I noticed that I forgot to do the symmetrify command. And I also need to multiply by the ratio of E over L. E is the modulus of elasticity and L is the length. And I can do that here by because the length of each element is the same. If the length was not the same, then I'd have to include the E over L into each local stiffness matrix. But here the length and the modulus of elasticity was the same for each element. So I factored that out and multiplied it in the very end uh, just to help make things cleaner. Okay, now we're going to define a vector containing all of the unknowns. The unknowns, we said, are the displacements in nodes 2 and 3, and the forces and moments in nodes 1 and 4. And we just use the solve function of MATLAB, and this solve function, you feed it two parameters. One is the equations and the other is the unknowns and then you have to use the vpa struct fun function to get at the unknowns okay looks like i did not define the unknowns properly i see a phi 3 where that should be phi 2 and uh, let's wait till i figure that out okay there phi 2 here are the results from MATLAB for displacements and forces and moments. These answers match with what is available in the example problem. You can further check that the equilibrium conditions for some of forces and moments is properly met. Note that these videos do take a bit of time and effort to create, so I appreciate any likes and subscribes if you found this content useful. Thanks for watching.